The main rationales for policy intervention can be identified in the presence of possible market failure characterizing entrepreneurial activity. But even the most orthodox among neoclassical economists would agree that the role of public policy in the domain of entrepreneurship is surely much broader and pervasive than that. Moving from a short run to a long-term perspective, we could say that public policy is crucial in creating an institutional background encouraging the entrepreneurial spirit and innovative activities. In fact, entrepreneurial activity does not take place in a vacuum, but is strongly influenced by the institutional matrix that connotes the society where individuals live in. With the term institution, it is meant the array of humanly devised constraints that structure interactions among individuals and that evolve gradually and often in a path-dependent manner through historical processes. They consist of both informal features like sanctions, taboos, customs, traditions and codes of conduct and formal rules as constitutions, laws and property rights. All these basically represent the rules of the game each individual shall consider in deciding actions of play. The key point here is that specific institutional arrangements arising in an economy, which to some extent are influenceable by policy making, might be keen and eager to productive entrepreneurial activity, while others may be not. A simple historical example, repeated by a number of Roman writers, highlights the importance of getting institutions right. A pure man invented unbreakable glass and demonstrated to Tiberius in anticipation of a great reward. The emperor asked the inventor whether anyone shared his secret and was assured that there was no one else, whereupon his head was promptly removed, lest say Tiberius, God be reduced to the value of mud. We don't know whether the story is effectively true and it's not interesting for our purposes to investigate it. But what is interesting to note is that for Roman writers of that time it was plausible. In fact, no Roman writer asked himself a question that probably would arise naturally today. Why did this inventor go to the emperor instead of turning to an investor for putting this invention into production and transforming it into a commercial innovation. We can answer to this question with a series of all credible reasons, ranging from the absence of viable investors to the difficulty to protect secrets from imitators. But the ultimate motive is that, at the time of ancient Rome, individuals' prestige and fame did not depend strongly on commercial success, but rather on land holding or political and military activity. In other words, the incentive structure arising from the institutional arrangement in place in Rome at that time was in such a way that diverted or not encouraged individuals from employing their talents, skills and competencies into what we would define today as an entrepreneurial activity. A favorable environment for carrying on entrepreneurial activities is therefore of fundamental importance for the prosperity of modern economic system. And policy has a key role in this respect, as we, we will see later on. While believing that an entrepreneurial spirit is likely to be beneficial to individuals in many aspects of their life and should be always incentivized, an effective systematic policy approach should aim at creating an entrepreneurial open society, in which barriers and burdens to entrepreneurial activity are removed and innovative new ideas can challenge the status quo and foster the dynamics of creative destruction. In that respect, policy and regulation can also be innovative as it is shown by the recent experiences in several countries of regulatory sandboxes, where new business ideas are tested in a controlled, light-touch regulatory framework. In such a society, entrepreneurship is key in generating their diversity, and contestable markets constitute the selection environment in which innovation can shape the future. Of course, we do not mean that the goal of entrepreneurship policy should be the one of turning each individual into an entrepreneur. Not all individuals are cut for being an entrepreneur and not all types of entrepreneurial hacks are truly innovative and increase private and social welfare. In his acceptance speech for the 2009 Global Award for Entrepreneurship Research, a sort of Nobel Prize for Studies in Entrepreneurship, Scott Shane titled his lecture with the emblematic statement, 
why encouraging more people to become entrepreneurs is bad public policy. Accordingly, what an entrepreneurial society requires is that those specific individuals with new and innovative ideas and, in principle, the talent and knowledge to turn them into reality are encouraged, or at least not too discouraged, to embrace their entrepreneurial career. This surely implies the need, from a policy perspective, to nurture and promote the values of a truly productive entrepreneurial culture in the world society. But at the same time, policy should aim at lowering the opportunity cost to become an entrepreneur, especially of those individuals with the greatest entrepreneurial talent. In fact, entrepreneurship policy is not really only about the quantitative matter of how many individuals choose entrepreneurship, the so-called entrepreneurship rate, but is also about the quality issue related to the question of who becomes an entrepreneur and to the human capital this type of individual embodies.